Hello, this is uh, C I Tom, Tango Oscar Mike. It's a Challenger XL65 Advanced Ultralight, currently located in Delhi, Ontario. And it was built by the late great Tom McClatchy. It's a beautiful airplane, has a lot of features in addition to the standard uh, XL65. As you can see, it's on floats, it also has wheels. And uh, I'm going to give you a brief tour of some of the features of the airplane and show you the craftsmanship. There's a lot more to this airplane that I'm not going to show you that you can find in Tom's videos, which are on his channel on YouTube. If you Google uh, Tom McClatchy and uh, XL65 walk around, you'll see two videos. There's an older one where this plane is pure white and a newer one where it has uh, the design that you're looking at now. And uh, that's because the design you're looking at now was a vinyl applied in the last two years to the airplane. One of the first things that people ask for or want to see is the panel in this nice little airplane. As you can see, it's mostly a steam gauge panel with VSI, airspeed, altitude, cylinder head, temperature, exhaust gas temperature, and coolant temperature. The engine is a water-cooled Rotax 582. There's also a very good built-in panel radio that is an MGL M6 radio, six watts transmit power. Works very well. There's a slip indicator, a digital tachometer, and a very sensitive VSI and that makes uh, figuring out things like glassy water landings on the floats very easy. You always know your descent rate. Among the many upgrades in the cockpit, you can see here the uh, throttle quadrant, which is an aero controls quadrant made by Bob Robertson and company in Salmon Arm, BC. It uh, gives very good reliable service and it's easy to access the choke and the, um, and the throttle. There's no mixture control for one of these engines. It's purely a system of uh, turning on the choke to start the engine and releasing it slowly once you get the engine fired up. Let's talk a bit about upholstery. The seats in this airplane are by uh, RC Auto which is the design uh, that was bought from uh, Jean-Claude and uh, Turbulence some years ago. They're beautifully made, and it was customized to narrow the seat so that there's more room for feet on the rudder pedals, which you'll notice, by the way, have been made a bit more user-friendly, having rounded tops and uh, lightning holes. Under the seat, there is under seat storage. There's storage under the seat in both the front and the back seats. Okay, a couple of more upgrades. Note, these are not the factory uh, seat belts and shoulder belts. These are actually aviation grade uh, seat harnesses which are more reliable to do up and undo in case of emergency, so they're better quick release, and they are stronger. If we look in the back seat, you'll see the stub of the rear control stick. That's a removable control stick, so you can have a passenger fly from the back seat, and uh, that works really well. It's removable so that there's no problem of the uh, anything you strap to the back seat interfering with the movement of the rear control stick. There's a push to talk switch and headphone jacks for the rear seat passenger here. It's a very lightweight plastic electronic kit box and it works well. The radio and the intercom built into this plane are very clear and uh, they're very effective. This is an XL65, so where in the past you would have seen a fuel tank here, you now have a baggage compartment which contains at the moment an emergency kit and the paddle for the uh, for float operations. 
and the wing tanks are 20 gallons of usable fuel in the wings, 10 in each wing, which gives you a range of uh, three hours or so at a normal cruise on floats, including the reserve. That barrel shaped device connected to the side of the master cylinder is a parking brake. The brakes are hydraulic on this aircraft. And so to uh, engage the parking brake, you squeeze the brake handle that is on the front pilot's control stick and then close the valve. And it does a very good job of keeping the airplane in one place during starting and that sort of thing. There's a detail here that isn't necessarily really clear. And that is the state of the tubing. There's a lot of tubing in this airplane and some parts of it are exposed or attached to other pieces. Some of it is black, including the tubing around the doors, these bow-shaped tubing, if I can zoom in a little bit, these tubings. If you look at a lot of Challengers or a lot of other light aircraft, you'll see paint flaking off those because the paint doesn't adhere well to aluminum and uh, it's very difficult for uh, a home builder to get a good permanent looking paint job. And in the case of this Challenger and my own Challenger, we had all of the parts that were metal that needed paint powder coated. So that paint is not chipping or flaking off. It's very well adhered. It's painted the same way your car would be, uh, sprayed with powder and baked. And so that paint is going to stay in good condition for a long time. The four main down tubes inside the cockpit, including this one at the back of the pilot seat, is not painted. It is actually covered in heat shrink tubing. And uh, that has a couple of big advantages. One is that it also doesn't scratch or chip or anything like that. The other is that it is warm to the touch. With a lot of uh, aluminum, if you're uh, familiar with what happens in cold weather here in Canada, you touch an aluminum tube and it will suck the heat right out of your hands and be very difficult to hold on to. The heat shrink tubing also acts as an insulator, so you can grab these tubes without any fear that your hands will stick to them. And they look nice. And as I say again, they won't chip or scratch. It's a very durable material. Rotex 582 engine blue head, water-cooled, uh, oil-injected, so the tanks for the uh, engine oil are mounted to the sides of the radiator. You can see the top louvers open on the radiator there, and that's the summer configuration. For the bottom configuration, there's also a bottom louver, which is bolted on and restricts the air flow so that the engine can achieve its full operating temperature in very cold weather. I've flown mine in minus 30 degrees Celsius, and uh, it has no trouble coming up to temperature. You just remove that uh, panel, the bottom louver, for summer operations. It's like a winter kit for a general aviation aircraft. Again, the radiator and all of those white parts that you see mounted to the radiator are powder coated, so they won't chip and they uh, they are very resilient and they'll remain pretty for a long time. We match the color of the paint fairly carefully to the color of the rest of the airplane. Uh, there are other details like the torque tube for the aileron here, which you will often see is bare aluminum for these airplanes. Uh, we decided that for the purposes of building this and my airplane, we would cover those in fabric and paint them with the rest of the wing. So it's a very clean and uh, non-corroding surface. You can see very easily what's going on, but it's pretty. And again, your fingers don't freeze to it during a pre-flight. Another comment about the paint, the paint on this airplane is all one color, white. It's a two-part polyurethane, and it's uh, glossy and very pretty and resistant to staining. Um, I've had to repair my airplane a couple of times, and it wasn't terribly difficult. There has been no fabric damage whatsoever on this airplane. It's uh, in perfect, pristine condition, and it will continue to be so for a long time to come. We had the, the uh, airplane professionally painted 
And the design that you see is a vinyl overlay, which was put on by a, um, a company called Stripe Art in Simcoe, Ontario. But there are a number of places that deliver the same kind of service. It's the same material that you use to put fancy designs on a car, for example. So it's very weatherproof, fade-proof, and uh, uh, easy to wash and maintain. So that is C. I. Tom, Tango Oscar Mike. Uh, it's going to go to a, a new owner soon, since Tom has passed away. I almost feel like we need to ask for references from the new owner to know that it's going to a proper good home. It almost seems more like an adoption than a sale. There are so many details here that I could show you from the way these tubes are mounted to the brackets, to the the small careful things that Tom did. Some of the ideas were mine, many of them were his, of uh, ways to just make it an easy to maintain plane that was clean and uh, looked great and was, uh, um, it was a good flyer. And this really is a good flyer. I've been on trips with uh, this plane a number of times. I've flown in it and I've been on trips with it several times. And it's, uh, it's probably the best Challenger that I have ever seen. It, it really is a, a work of art. Whoever gets this is going to be one lucky person. From the beginning, the agreement that Tom and I had was that as we were building our planes together, we would do mine first, make all the mistakes, and then build his. Well, it didn't actually quite work out that way because, in fact, we built them almost simultaneously. But we certainly had a couple of uh, fairly smart people, I would like to think, who paid a lot of attention to detail bringing these planes. And we had a lot of help from experts, the manufacturers, the kit, local builders, local professional builders, uh, with all of the construction and the assembly and the crafting of the pieces that, uh, that went into it. So please uh, consider it, have a look, and uh, enjoy. As I said before, look at Tom McClatchy's YouTube channel, and he will explain to you more of the details of how this was built, and uh, you'll get a sense of the craftsmanship in it. It really is a unique aircraft.